so obviously we're gonna make his cute little hat green and obviously his little uh, shamrock is gonna be green so I'm gonna start with the lightest color which is going to be green the, his his beard okay Paulette yay I'm glad you're here and you found us hello Debbie Yay, I'm so glad you found us. So I'm gonna start with his beard because that's the lightest color and then we'll work ourselves out to um, his nose and his green hat and all the good fun things. So we're gonna start with, I have some water, a cup of water, a couple of brushes, and I'm gonna start with some white. Uh, I flipped myself, <laughs> I flipped. If, uh, you know what, remember when I couldn't figure out how to flip? Well, if you go live on not using your business page app, thank you for sprinkling, Kim. We're gonna give away uh, one of the two uh, St. Patty's gnomes that I have for, for to uh, one person who sprinkles. We're gonna draw a name. So sprinkle away. Anyway, Janice, um, if you use the regular Facebook app instead of the business app, you can flip yourself using that little toolbar. So that's how I figured it out. I had to go to YouTube and ask 100 questions to figure it out, but that's what I did. Okay, so I'm gonna do his beard. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white with some gray. This is actually Cable Knit Gray by Delta. I don't want his beard to be super gray. But I do want it not, I don't want it to blend in with all that green. I don't want everything to be dark. So I'm just going to start painting. And you guys chat me up. If you have any questions about our boot camp that's now open, it's a four-week boot camp course um, for, for beginners, glass art beginners. So if you have any questions about that, I'm going to be happy to answer those right now. Uh, maybe in even some of the girls or fellas, Richard, who are online can answer questions as well, but I'm just gonna paint because that's what I wanna do. It's all about the painting, isn't it? Mama, mama, mama. Oh, wow, Richard, you go. Thanks for the sprinkles. So I'm gonna just start in my gray. I'm just gonna start pulling his beard in. This brush is terrible. That's a bad brush. It's been sitting, <laughs> confession, it's been sitting in my water bucket for like four days and it is, angry. So we are just going to, I already traced my um, gnome onto my canvas because I drew him for St. Patty's Day. And so I just trace him off of that. So I'm going to come in and add some white on top of that gray because I don't want him to be terribly gray. I'm going to give him some uh, salt and pepper. Yeah. And so I'm just gonna keep painting. I'll look up every now and then to see if anybody has a question, but if I miss it, I feel certain that there's somebody here who, right, Catherine? I thought he had too much glass too. Thank you, Steph, for sprinkling. Um, I'm just gonna paint and let go of all my um, anger issues for today. <laughs> it's been one of those days where, you know, people are just irritating you. You know what I'm saying? Nobody here. It's just, you know, people, you know, maybe kids or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try not to throw anybody under the bus. So I'm just doing a little bit of gray, a little bit of white, a little bit of gray, a little bit of white. Richard's paranoid about losing his, <laughs> his inventory. That's pretty funny, Richard. So I'm just adding a little bit of gray onto my brush. And then I'm gonna go into my white and just go right over the top of that, wet on wet. We're gonna give our little gnome some beard time. So who likes beards on dudes? Anybody out there, a beard girl? I'm not necessarily. Not really my thing. Not that I hate beards on a guy. I'm more of a goatee, a dude with a goatee maybe. I know Richard don't have any hair, so 
<laughs> I know Madison doesn't care. <laughs> right, Darlene? Every day. Jesus, take the wheel, man. Come on. It's like you better back up off of me. Let's see. I'm just going to... I know I need my hands to go onto the... Um, his little clover, but I'm just gonna add that in because it's gonna be, I don't wanna concentrate that hard. <laughs> Is that not ridiculous? It's like, I am really like on the verge. <laughs> I've been on the edge, living on the edge. Staff, really? You got angry today, not, nothing like a bit of painting. Love your gnome, not a beard person or a goatee. I hear ya. The only way I like hair on the face of a man is like a goatee mustache kind of thing. I prefer no hair, but you know. For me also, it's like up to the dude. If he wants to have a if he wants to have a beard, that's on, on him. I wouldn't want some fella telling me what I couldn't have with my in my hair situation, right? So I try not to be too, you know, opinionated about that, but I do prefer a clean shaven man. Just me. Just me, and I'm not sure. I guess we got to talking about that because I'm doing Mr. Mr. Beard over here. I just forgot why I was talking about beards. <laughs> Fear of losing glass. That's pretty funny. Hey, Linda, how are you? Long time no see, lady. My faux finishing friend. So we're just making a gnome. That's gonna be holding a cute little shamrock. We're gonna add some glass to him. If he's dry enough by the time we get there, we will do that today. If not, we may come back later. I'll come back after I've had a glass of wine or two. <laughs> Tell y'all how much better I'm feeling. <laughs> so let me kind of step back from that and see how I like it. Ah, uh, he's still a little dark up here. Let me get some of that gray out. Your hair, your hair, all three of your hairs, Johnny? I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you don't need no hair, Johnny. Don't need no hair. I think that my friend Richard has the same hair problem you have. Yeah, I agree, Christy, some, some do. Now, ooh, I need to shut up. I was about to be ugly, so I'm not. I'm gonna be nice and shut my mouth, <laughs> which is very unusual for me if you are on here and know me very well. Because I do like to run that mouth sometimes. Okay, I think that's good. So that is our ZZ Top beard. Get out of town. No way. Glass. Kim, I sell glass on my website. It is, I'm going to post that link. Or if somebody will post my link for me, uh, uh, Catherine or Richard or somebody, it's www artshattered.com is where you can buy glass. You can buy it from me. I do sell it, and I do appreciate the business if you uh, so choose to buy from me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do his nose because that's gonna be this little peachy color, and it's a kind of a light color too. So I'm gonna go ahead and squirt a little bit of this light flesh color. I don't need much. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, doll. And we'll get another little brush, just a little, um, a little bit of a bigger liner brush. And we'll add his cute little nose in this flesh tone. I like you know, you guys know, I don't do a lot of whimsical stuff like um, to sell because, I don't know why, because I probably should, 
but I do love painting the whimsical stuff. I, I don't, I should really do it more. I do love to paint it. I don't know why I don't do it as, enough. So we'll just put his little hands on. We may have to fix those after we do the green, but that'll at least give us an idea of where his little cute hands are gonna go. Yeah, I totally love painting cute little whimsical things for Valentine's and Christmas and such. I know that's a little messy, but we're gonna come back and fix that. So while that's wet on his nose, I'm just gonna dip into a little bit of white and give him a little bit of a highlight on one side of his nose or not. It kind of has a little bit of a dried paint something something there. So let's add a little bit of white on one side of his nose. And then I, here, I'm gonna add a little bit of red too on one side. And I just need one little brush stroke. So I'm just gonna go right in my little cap <laughs> and cheat and just put him a little stroke of red on that side of his nose, because it's cold outside. And his nose is cold and he needs a little, and, you know, he needs some um, earmuffs and mittens. All right, so now, I think the next, I think we'll go ahead and paint the green. And I brought a couple of colors of green. Hey Pam, that's two days in a row. I need to watch your live. I've been on this Facebook so much, I haven't even been able to see one of your lives. So I could see your pretty face from drinkers. So I need, I know, Pammy, all you have to do is sprinkle. You might win him and I will mail him to you. Isn't he cute? So I have a couple of greens. And so I'm just gonna put a little bit of each one out here because I couldn't decide exactly which one I wanted to use. <clears throat> right, I love steampunk art too, Teresa. So I'm just gonna, oh, I went a little overboard there. So I'm just gonna put a couple of these colors out. We may intermix. I don't know, I may just use one and I'll have to, ugh. Won't be that one. Let's see. Huh, I think I'll start with this one and then maybe highlight because it's definitely gonna need more than one coat. So, Rima, Rima, hello dear. This was a surprise live, unexpected, because like I was telling the other folks, I was kind of having an icky day. And so I figured it was either come on here live and paint something with all my friends or I was gonna have to start drinking. And then, you know, I'd be intoxicated and uh, I'm just gonna paint right over those hands. I don't know why I did that. I'm just gonna be fighting that hand fight. Got a little ahead of myself, didn't I? That's how it goes. I was gonna start drinking and then I'd, you know, be passed out by seven o'clock because I'm not certain I would be able to have a stopping point the way I, the mood I'm in today. Just hanging out here. Isn't that funny how that works? It's like the minute I signed on, I felt in a better mood. Pretty amaze balls. So my shamrock, that's a pretty good color. It's gonna need a second coat. No way, Pam. Oh, is it Dixie Bell time? <coughs> I'm choking. Is it Dixie Bell time? So now let's do a little stem. We'll let that dry while we do his hat and then we'll come back and do that. It is a pretty Irish green, isn't it? It is called, it's folk art grass green. So that, that's worked out pretty well. So let's do his hat. We're gonna do his hat in green as well. And then we'll highlight it. <coughs> and then we'll do his little other shamrock too. I know it seems like all these greens are gonna to blend together. Did I freeze? Did I freeze up? Hello. 
Oh, okay, good. Stay until Sunday. Pam is my bestie from Eaton Ton GA. She is your Dixie Belle queen. So if you need chalk paint, you need to see Pam. Are you teaching Pam or are you just going? Let's see, I'm just gonna keep painting and chatting. It feels good to just chat. Definitely needs two goats. Only thing frozen here, right? I'm so sick of it. Ugh. So over it. And I had to cut wood today too. You know, I've been putting it off, putting it off because it's been so cold and so, Sam Brock show the thing there, cool. So cold and so wet and rainy, I just put it off and put it off and put it off because I don't have the luxuries that I had when I lived in Georgia, big fancy studio with lots of space to do all those things. So I put it off, put it off, put it off, and I, oh, you're a student this time. I put it off and put it off until I couldn't put it off anymore. Now I am, I had to go out there in the cold, damp rain, and cut some stuff. That is gonna be different for you, Miss Pammy. All right, there's this little terribly painted hat. Where are you, Teresa? I forget. Ugh, do not want any part of the snow. None, nada, zero. Okay, I'm gonna paint his shamrock, this shamrock, a little darker color so it doesn't blend in. So I'm gonna just go into this other green. Maybe we'll mix it up a little. We're gonna add, we're gonna add some um, dots to his hat anyway, so. We'll dress his hat up a little. It's snowing in Ohio? He is getting some personality, isn't he? He is. He is sassy. He is gonna be sassy, like me. I'm feeling a little sassy today. The feeling a little sassy. Who else is feeling sassy today? Snow and rain tomorrow. You know, I looked at the weather for Memphis and it is like just rain as far as you can see. Far out as the weather will show you. Rain, rain, and more rain. Ugh. Yuck. All right, I'm going to put a second coat on this and I'm gonna kind of mix in these two colors so it has a little halo. A little second coat. We're probably gonna add some green glass to this or some glass beads or something, maybe later on after it dries. So I don't know why I'm worrying too much about it because you won't even be able to see it. So we should really focus on this hat. Cold in Florida? Now, aren't you going to South Florida, Pam? Where are you going? I forget where that convention is. Ugh, if it's cold in Florida. Sean, I agree. I agree, Stephanie, I agree. That's his name. He is hereby to be known as Sean the Gnome. No way, Jim. No way. I think it's 44 here. It's pretty gross. I'm not pleased. I'm not a happy camper. Tampa. How is it that cold in Tampa? I'm just gonna paint away. Sometimes you have to be quiet and concentrate so you don't mess something up. I want his hat to be nice and opaque. 
Thank you, Wendy. Is he not cute? He's gonna be so adorable. Completely adorbalicious. By the time I'm done with him, I'll be able to go have myself some wine. And after painting for 45 minutes and then having a glass of wine, I should feel way better, huh? <laughs> we'll come, maybe we'll come back and have a wine party. Okay, I am going to wipe some of that off. Do my little shamrock here again. I need a smaller brush for that. Let me see what I got. Let me see. He is cute. Monica, I had done a um, a gnome for Valentine's. I had done this cute little gnome for Valentine's. So all I did was trace him back out and, with uh, tracing paper and then just added the shamrock instead of the heart. So I, I kind of cheated. I just traced from my original drawing of the Valentine's Gnome and then transferred it to this canvas so I wouldn't have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, so I cheated a little bit. Wine and painting do go together. So if we come back this evening, which I'm sure we will, because I'm trying to hawk my boot camp, then uh, we will be sporting some wine. I'm hoping my Angel wings will be dry by then, but if it's not, we'll do something fun. I've got like uh, six things I have to paint. Hey, Beverly. I have about six things I have to paint in the next uh, few weeks. So we'll do one of those things, one way or another. Okay, so I am going to give him a little bit of highlight I'm gonna do that just by, I'm gonna wet my brush. It's a six by 12, Elizabeth. <clears throat> uh, the tracer is in the, uh, the tracer, Ruth, the paint tracer is in the shattered circle and it is in the B challenge. I think you're in both of those places. So you'll be able to find that. The only difference is uh, there's no shamrock. The tracer is for the, um, Valentine's, but I'll try to get you a tracer for this as well. For the shattered circle folk. Okay, so I'm going to just give him a little bit of detail. And then we'll add some white dots. That way. Kind of makes him pop. Yeah. Makes it pop. Teeny smidge more. Around his nose, just a little shadow. Around his nose, a couple of places. We'll come back with a little pen and add a little something, something too. I think we'll also we rinse that. Maybe we'll come back and do something else fun and whimsical. This is way more fun. Just doing something silly, sassy, something fun. Do a little bit of that on this. Okay. Hmm. We're going to do um, something else here, so I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to highlight that. So now I think what I'm gonna do, here's what I like to do to make dots, okay? So I, yes, we need one with a bunny. Maybe a gnome with, a, with bunny ears and holding an Easter egg. <laughs> that would be super fun. So what I like to do to make like dots on his hat is take one of your larger paint brushes and just use the end. Just use the end of your paint brush. Let me see if that's the best one. This one's probably the best one because it's a little bit flatter. And just dip it in your white paint. Boom, boom, boom. And then dot. Oh, yeah. That's so cute. Mm. 
Yeah, super cute. Love him already. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see, I feel like I'm making them two lined up. Yeah, sp spread these suckers out a little bit. He is adorable. I'm digging him. So somebody is going to receive this cute little fella or the other one that I'm working on. One of these two. Might not be this exact one because I have two in process. One of these, one of these is going out. Somebody tell everyone. Somebody tell everyone how they could potentially receive this beauty in the mail come tomorrow. Okay, I need to put some shoes on this fella. I know, Elizabeth, it was that or it was gonna be ugly. Yes, that's right, sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. I'm gonna give him some shoes. You wet my brush, and I'm just using black. It's just Anita's black craft paint. Gonna go in, just give him a little shoe business. This brush is kind of icky, too. I am terrible with brushes. This is why I do not buy expensive paint brushes because I'm notorious for leaving them sitting in the water. And then their brush hairs get all icky like this one is. <laughs> oh, this one is really icky. All the brush hairs are fanned out. So all you have to do to fix that really is uh, boil some water and then swirl them in the hot water for about 30 seconds. And that'll kind of rejuvenate your br bristles. But um, they, I have to get really desperate for that. I need to get um, in between his beard there. So. Let's see, yes. Thank you for the sprinkles. Let me know if you did sprinkle and because uh, we're gonna have a drawing. And give this sweetheart away. Let me turn this way. I don't wanna get my arm in my gnome dots. We gotta give him some ground to walk on too, don't we? Otherwise he's just floating in the air. So, I have to be quiet while I do this and concentrate so I don't mess it up. I have to hold my tongue right too, so you have to be really quiet. <laughs> I have to hold your mouth right. Yeah, I think so too, Elizabeth. I think it's uh, February. It might be January. all runs together. He's got big feet, don't he? I need that other brush back. Let me find it. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Sandy. Let's see if I can find my other brush. Not doing a very good job on his shoes. My hands are a little bit kind of shaky today for some reason. So, I think we need to repair that a little bit. I'll get to it in a second. 
Now I'm going to add a little bit of white just to highlight his shoes a little bit on the tips. So we'll just give it a little swirl of white right there. Make his little shoes stand out. Yay, Pam, thank you. And let's see. I'm gonna repair his little beard here. In a couple of places. Okay, I need to put his hands back in and if, let me see if that's dry, it is. So let's put his little hands back. Later, Tata. Night, Johnny. Or not night, uh, whatever. <laughs> Later. So let's give him some hands. Can't have this uh, shamrock just floating, can we? His little gnome hands. That's gonna take two coats too. Hey, Brandy. Hey, Mary. Yes, Elaine, absolutely. Uh, the only thing you need to do is just make an adjustment for, you know, the shamrock instead of the heart. That should be fairly simple, but I will try to get you um, inside the group. I will try to get you um, this version too, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Treat my girls in the group special. I am going to add some green glass to his little shamrock in the middle. My little fellow, my little friend. I need to add, I need to repair this little spot. Oh my goodness. All right, he needs some ground to walk on. Otherwise, he's just floating in the air. And I need to do a little wash around... Round, around, around. I thought I brought, we'll use the gray. Did you, oh my God, I don't envy the snow shoveling. So I'm gonna add some little ground for him to stand on. And I'm just gonna do it with my gray and my white. Just gonna blend it, and we'll just come down here. Add some color to the bottom. Can't have him floating in the air. Nobody likes that. It was just as easy as that. Just get you a little paint on your brush and give him some something to stand on. He's super cute. Okay, now what I'm gonna do real quick, hang on, I'm gonna put a little paint on the side because it's a little bit dirty. I'm just gonna use the white with a little bit of gray mixed in and Clean up my sides, because this canvas turned out a little icky. And you don't want, you always want to either pre-prime your canvas before you start painting or, or after. You know, so I'll go in and just fill in around the edges. We're gonna let them dry for a minute, but you don't want to just start on an unpainted canvas, unless you're gonna be painting the whole thing, because then you have icky spots. See, like right here, you don't want to just leave that. You want to make sure that's covered up. It's not pretty if you don't make it pretty. It has to be nice and fresh. So now I am just going to take my white with just a teeny bit of gray mixed in. And we're just going to go around the edges. Add a little color to his life. Need a little water. I'm 
No hair, please. Donna Payne, I love you. I miss you. Speaking of wine drinking. <laughs> my friend, my little wine drinking friend. I need a little more white. Just a smidge. So I'm just gonna give him a little background work, just so he's not dirty. So we'll come real close in, just walk, just work around. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yes. So I'm just filling in. Go here. Thank you, Janie. Isn't he cute? Would that not be adorable? We'd have to let all this dry to do that. That would be so cute. I'd have to find the right colors. I don't even know if I have rainbow colors. I might have to look. We may uh, have some wine and come back and do that. <laughs> I'll feel rainbowy then, won't I? I'll feel really rainbowy. Yes. So cute. See, there's some icky spots here too that you don't. Um, I'm not sure if I can either. Truth be told, you know, I have limitations too. <laughs> I bet we could figure it out. And if, you know what, and if it looked like garbage, then that's just how it goes sometimes, isn't it? I make some dogs sometimes too. I've made quite a few dogs in my career. You just don't advertise those hide those in the back room. How cute is that? O-M-G. I wanna use my little brush to just get a little into here. Get off there. Hang on. I need to try, not on this one I think, but I need to try it on something else and then um, maybe uh, come back and do that so I don't mess this up because, you know, I don't know. I don't know about a rainbow. I don't know. He is so stinking cute, guys. I wish you could see him close up and in person. Cute. Cute. Cute, I got a little overlap, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna come in. Fix that up. He is so cute. Oh my goodness, it is darling. Look at him close up, guys. Look at his cute self. Oh my goodness, I wish I could get it closer. Look at his hat. Look, adorable. I know he's sideways, but that's the best I can do. But he is stinking so cute. All right, let me look at something. Let me look at something. Hold your horses. Add and go back. That's right. Let me see if I have green. We'll do that right now if I do. Wow! I do not, oh I do! I don't know if this green is acceptable. Let me look. Like the green. 
green I have. So we may have to let this dry and get some green because it's, this is a little too small because it's only about an inch and a half. It's a little too small for regular glass. So I need to either use glass beads or fritz. And I do have the, these glass beads, but oh, that might be okay. Hmm. He's still wet though, so I can't really do anything yet. So we may have to let him dry. Is he not cute? Oh, he's so cute. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is just add a little Flava Flav. We're gonna do that with this very simple um, technique using a graphic needle drawing pen. Okay, this is resin safe. Okay, it's called a graphic needle drawing pen. It's the 0.5, that uh, indicates the size of the tip. And what we're gonna do is outline our cute little gnome because as cute as he is, he needs a little something, something, right? So I'm gonna show you the difference. Are you a St. Patty's baby? I am this close to be an April Fool's baby. So I'm like, if my mom could have hold, held on a few more hours. So I wanna show you the difference this pen will make. Hey, Miss Carolyn, how are you? So what this is gonna do is just outline all of the detail work, okay? And it's gonna make a huge difference. I'm gonna do his hat just to show you the difference it makes in using this pen and you could use you could use a liner brush, you know, just a really thin liner brush and black uh, paint if you want to, but I find this super simple. So, and I don't like to do like full straight lines. So I'm gonna go around and then around and I'm just doing skips, okay? So let me, I'm gonna finish this hat up and then show you close up the difference it makes between having it and not having it. So let's do our little clover. So this pin, it's like it adds the finishing touch Okay, so just, I'm gonna do his nose too, just so you can see. The difference that makes. So you see how I use my pen to outline the entire hat, and it just really makes all the color pop. It's like the finishing touch to, um, to your piece. Because even though his beard looks super cool, Watch what happens when we just give it a little outline. So we're gonna outline, and then I, I like to like add a few dots, because I like to do skippies. Skip, 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 skip. Then we'll do a couple of dots, skip. So it's kind of random. So look at the difference on this side of his beard versus this side just looks more finished, don't you think? So we're gonna keep going. We'll do his beard. And it's just simple. You're just drawing, and I'm not trying to be perfect and stay all within the lines of everything. I prefer it to be a little wild. Yeah. Hey, Cindy, how are you? I don't, I'm not trying to make it outlining perfectly. So I'm doing skip lines, short, short, short lines. So we'll do his hands. And look how, see his hands, not perfect. Don't want it to be. So we'll do this. And some of this won't show because we're going to add some glass to this in just a hot minute. But we're gonna do it anyway. We'll do his shoes, even though you can't really see the black on black. We're gonna do a 
couple of lines down here. So voila, I'm gonna turn it sideways, even though, you know, it's sideways, so it's kind of harder to see, but we'll do it close up in a minute. But that is what this pen does. This pen will help you outline, and it makes everything just pop. Make, brings everything together. So, this, hey, Mary Ellen, how are you today? So yeah, it makes a huge difference. Just, I mean, even just look at his beard. It's kind of hard to tell on video on the, the with the green, but look at his beard, how much better it looks just with a little bit of that outline, okay? So now we're gonna use, because this is such a small piece, and this, that's a, this is like an inch and a half, you know, and it's too, it's too small to use the regular crushed grass, crushed grass, <laughs> crushed glass that I would normally use. So we're gonna use this right here. You can get this at Hobby Lobby. It's called Be Treasures. It's in the jewelry department where you, um, where you make your own jewelry. So it's in the jewelry department and they are glass seed beads and this color is called emerald. Okay, so it's teeny, tiny little glass beads for jewels. So you, they make, uh, I guess, bracelets and all kinds of fun things out of this stuff. So I am going to, I want to just make sure I can get this open when it's time. Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna glue these down because you can't just pour these like glass onto your canvas and then resin over the top. You have to glue these down because they're so tiny that if we put them on here and then poured resin, they would just float all over the place. So what we're gonna do is use our glue. This is Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. And I'm gonna outline my little shamrock here and my big shamrock here. It does add depth. Those are the words I was looking for, Donna, and couldn't find because Mark is like in my head, okay? My boyfriend, Mark, was all in my head. Hey, Sheila, how are you? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the tip of my little glue, and I'm just going to add a very generous amount of glue to this little shamrock pom-pom that's on the end of this little fella's hat hard to talk and be careful at the same time. Now I'm being very generous with my glue, but I'm also staying in the lines. I wanna be generous because I want the beads to really be thick there. Um, so you're gonna be super generous, not really thin. You want it to be thick and kind of puffy. And I'm gonna do the same here. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my glue bottle to outline and be very generous, a really nice, generous coat of glue. I'm gonna try not to get glue on his little fingers. It'll be nice. So I'm just filling in the shamrock portion very generously with my glue. Now we won't be able to resin this tonight because of the glue but that's okay. I'm gonna probably resin it in the morning and then just show it to you because it's gonna be the same typical process. But I really wanted to show you tonight how you can use these glass beads that you get at the Hobbly Lobbly to accent a really cute piece of art. So that is really nice and thick. Very generous amount of glue. Every square inch of that is covered. I'm gonna put the top back on my glue. Hello, friends. And here's what I'm gonna do. Notice I have my piece like in the lid of a shoebox plastic thingy. So that is going to catch any of the beads that just flow over when I pour them on. Because here's what I'm gonna do. That's very thick glue. So I'm just gonna open this up and I, I'm literally going to just pour 
all over my canvas. See, now you see why I needed my paint to dry very well before we did this, because we are gonna just gob it on everywhere, just cover the whole thing really heavy, okay? And that's why we have it in a little tray to catch all the beads. Now what I'm gonna do is just use this plastic flat part of the bead container and just press those beads down into that glue. That's why I wanted the glue to be really nice and thick so that it would really take on those beads, okay? So I'm gonna press, 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 press. We're gonna let that sit. Press it down, we're gonna give that a few minutes to like catch hold. Let's dump this and see what we get. So what I'm gonna do is just take, I'm gonna make sure that's pressed in. Thank you guys, you are so sweet. And I'm gonna just dump the excess off. Ooh. And you know, you can just let this dry fully before you dump it if you need to, or if you want to. I mean, it's not necessary for you to dump it before it's completely dry. I just wanted to kind of show you guys. Whew. I'm gonna get a little popsicle stick to help guide me. So you can just take a little stick or your fingernail or whatever and just kind of any loosey-goosey little beads, you can just kind of push in where you need them to be. And this is so cute. So I'm just kind of making sure everything is in place where it needs to be. And so what we'll do now, look how cute. Can you see how sparkly those glass beads are? So what we need to do now is just let that dry. And then tomorrow, I've got beads all over my fingers with glue. So tomorrow, I'm probably gonna mess with this just a little bit and make sure it actually looks like a shamrock. We just kind of push that in. Let me mess with it just a minute because you know, I'm a little crazy. I won't be able to stand it. Move that in a little. Because you do want it to look like a shamrock or what's the point, right? Okay. So we're gonna completely let this dry. Okay, so I have my teeny little baby measuring cups and I am gonna mix right here on top of my piece of art just to drive Pam crazy. Pam Fagan makes her crazy when I pour resin on <laughs> her pieces. So don't try this at home. I am an experienced professional. <laughs> Not really, but you know. It's better if you, if you do this down here on your table in case you have a little spill. But I uh, like to throw caution to the wind. That cup looks dirty. Hang on. <sighs> that cup looked like it had something in it. So I am going to make, <laughs> does it make you crazy? Okay, just take a breath, close your eyes. I promise I won't make a mess. And I'm using my little teeny baby bottles of resin so it makes it a little less uh, nerve wracking. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, it just brings it closer to my eyeballs and uh, I can see how I'm pouring better. Okay, so there is Part one, which is the hardener, okay? So now I'm gonna set that aside, grab up my resin, and we're going to do in this cup the same amount, very slowly, because it's kind of like molasses, and it'll start catching up with you way faster than you think. So I think that's gonna do it, but I'm gonna give it a second, let it catch up with itself. Hello, Miss Brandy. How are you, love? Okay, so it's perfect. It caught up with my line. They're equal parts. 
So now we have the perfect measurement. So now I'm just going to dump one into the other. Doesn't matter which, guys. Just dump one and make sure you get out as much of that resin as humanly possible. You don't want to leave a lot behind. You want to scrape all that goodness out so that your measurement is good. I'm going to scrape all I can, leave nothing to chance. All right, then I'm going to take it off of my art piece so nobody has a heart attack. <laughs> I like living on the edge, ladies. Living on the edge. All right, let me throw that away. So now I have all of my resin in one cup. I have 50% hardener, 50% resin. So I am just gonna gently stir this for three minutes. I'm looking at uh, the clock at the top of my iPad, and I'm just gonna stir this casually, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom for three minutes so that we can ensure that it's nice and mixed up. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take advantage of you all and ask you if you have signed up for boot camp. If you have signed up for boot camp or have taken boot camp, how about give me some hearts? I want to see all the boot camp hearts on the page. I don't know if anybody here has. I think Samantha has. So give me some hearts if you have. There you go. That might, that's Judy. I know you have. Look at all my hearts. Yes. Okay, so here's the next question. Thank you, Rhonda. You rock on, girl. Thank you, Kim. If you want to sign up for boot camp, or if you, if you, if you want, to, I'm, I don't know, I'm just talking outside of my head. Hey, Ardeth, how are you? If you haven't taken boot camp, but really, 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 really want to, Give me some thumbs up. I wanna see who I need to talk to out there. Give me some thumbs up if you really, 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 really wanna take it so that I can help you make your decision. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you are an experienced glass artist, you do not need to take boot camp. It is really for beginners that is the only time I'm ever going to tell you not to take my course <laughs> in my life because <laughs> I really want you to take my course. So the, the four week boot camp is for beginners. It is so that you can gain the experience and the confidence that you need to create glass art. Now in this four week course, we're going to do four glass art projects. I'm still stirring like a good girl. We're gonna do four glass art projects, but not just that. I'm gonna teach you how to um, source glass for your projects. I'm gonna teach you how to tent glass, how to cut glass, how to break a vase and shape it into the shapes that you need for your projects. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about resin. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to use a palette knife I'm gonna teach you all the things you have ever needed to know to make a piece of glass art. So I have left nothing to chance. I want you to learn all the things. And if you've been following me long enough to know, you know I'm gonna give you everything I possibly can. That's just how I roll. It is a wonderful, comprehensive course. It's pre-recorded workshop videos, so you do not you can work at your own pace. You do not have a time frame. You do not have to be somewhere at a certain time. You don't have a time limit. You have 24 seven access to these workshops for as long as Facebook allows me to have this page. I'm excited too, Lisa. So the workshops are uh, pre-recorded step-by-step -step videos Yes, absolutely, Kim. I'll tell you that in just a second. The workshops are step-by-step -step videos, 
And we also include a PDF document for uh, people who learn better that way. So both versions, the, the videos and the PDF document, it takes you through step by step by step with pictures and video on how to create each piece of art. There is a master supply list inside that you'll get immediately upon registration. And there is also a, a, um, a broken down supply list for each project. So for workshop one, there's a list. For workshop two, there's a list. But then there's a master list in case you wanna just go get all the things at once. Now let me tell you the last thing and then we're gonna uh, resin our cute little man. Thank you, Melissa, very sweet. Um, if you sign up before midnight Friday, your name goes on my board, and I'll show you my board in just a second. Your name goes on my board, and we're gonna pick one winner out of those names that are uh, posted on my board behind me, and one person is going to win a little glass kit to help them with all the things they need in boot camp, It's not gonna be all inclusive, but it's gonna have a lot of things that you need. Glass, glass chips, some glass strips, and including some resin. So get in before midnight, and that's when we close the door, and then somebody, we're gonna pick a winner at midnight on Friday so that I can ship it out on Saturday and get that prize to some lucky winner. Bootcamp is fabulous and it'll help you. It's an inexpensive way to help you um, figure out if that's something that you would like to do. Uh, and then you can continue on after that. You could join the Shattered Circle or you could continue on your own or, you know, you could just do whatever you want at that point. But we'd love to have you so, so much. It is, let me see if I, I don't know if I can post the link. I meant to do that before um, I started, but I'm gonna post it at the top of this page. Uh, you can go to artshattered.com, click on the link that says Boot Camp, and you can get all the information there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started because I've stirred myself into a tizzy over here. So here's what I'm gonna do first. When I do glass beads, I like to do the opposite of what I would normally do when, I know I've been stirring too long, Keitha. <laughs> Luckily, I have about 30 or 40 minutes open time, and so I'm good to go. So when I, when I pour over glass beads, I like to do it a little backwards, because normally I would pour on my glass first and then pour on the empty spaces. But I don't want to oversaturate my glass beads because then it it's kind of starts looking plasticky. So what I'm gonna do first is just drizzle some resin. Oop, there's a little fuzz ball right there already. I should have blown it off. I'm gonna drizzle the resin on by a flat surface. I might have not made enough for both. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on those glass beads. And there's another reason why because I do not want to oversaturate. I'm going to use my hands, really, to cover. I only made enough for one. So I'm going to use my hands now. Yeah, I stir for, she knows. She's my timer sometimes. I'm going to use my hands and just pull that resin around all on the flat surface of my piece where there is no glass or any um, glass beads. And see, some of them are loosey-goosey. I'm just gonna stick them back where they go when I get there. I'm just gonna keep scrubbing around. So what, after we do this, I'm gonna raise the camera back up and then we're gonna pick a winner because somebody is gonna win one of these. I made a couple. So we're gonna pick a winner give one of these away to someone who shared yesterday. Oh, I keep saying the bad word. So now I'm just gonna smush around some of that resin to make sure that's covered really well so none of the beads try to escape their 
where they're supposed to be. Okay, I think we're good. Let me just take a look. Get all that off there. I'm gonna save that because I need to make some more for my next one. So half an ounce is what it took. Oh, so cute. We got an escapee. Okay, so now real quick, <laughs> it keeps sticking to my, to my glove. Real quick, I'm just gonna take a peek. I'm gonna look at it from a couple different angles to make sure I have resin covering all my spaces. It looks pretty good. See, and what, one of the things we teach in boot camp too is how to apply your resin so that you don't waste a ton. Because resin is not that cheap, guys. And so when you over pour, when you just flood your canvas with resin and it comes out really thick and it's just running over the sides, you're wasting so much resin. And I'm gonna teach you how to not be wasteful with your resin so it saves you time and buku dollars, because I'm all about saving the dollars. So now I'm gonna just use my little torch to pop any bubbles that may have happened while we were stirring. So I'm just gonna real quick, give it a once over. I'm almost out of propane in my little torch. Once over, real quick, don't get the fire on your canvas. Just real quick, boop, 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 done. That's gonna pop any bubbles that uh, popped into my resin while I was pouring. So, oh my goodness. So now I really wanna take one split second and get this little fuzz ball out of my piece. I don't know where he came from, but he needs to go away. Here's another little fuzz ball. Probably from my clothes. Okay, so we...